Does cell phone use increase your risk of cancer? It's a hot-button debate. The latest development, a memo from Dr. Ronald Herberman, director of the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute, offering precautionary advice on cell phone use to his faculty and his staff. We welcome to Larry King Live, Dr. Deborah Davis, director of the Center for Environmental Oncology at the University of Pittsburgh's Cancer Institute, Dr. Keith Black, Chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery and Director of the Maxine Dunitz Neurosurgical Institute at Cedar sinai in L.A., and also from L.A., Dr. Paul Song, radiation oncologist. Dr. Davis has this new book, The Secret History of the War on Cancer. All right, Dr. Davis, what do you make of Dr. Herberman's memo? Well, I'm very... Should frighten everybody. Well, we don't want to frighten people. We want people to take precautions. That's the reason he wrote the memo. Precautions being? Well, to use an earpiece and to not keep your phone on on your body all the time and to make sure that children are not using uh, cell phones. Uh, At all? No, no. Young children particularly need to be careful, and particularly toddlers who now have cell phones that they use to play with. Um, this is a really bad idea. What led Dr. Herberman to this finding? Well, he looked at the literature and was aware of the growing concerns that we do not have enough information, nor do we have enough time to be sure that cell phones are safe. And there's reason for concern that they may be harmful. So we need to take some precaution rather than waiting to experiment on the rest of us. So Dr. Black, meaning if they are harmful, we don't know why they're harmful, right? Well, we know that microwave radiation uh, can damage uh, cells, uh, and there's been some experimental evidence to, to suggest that there are harmful effects. Uh, but uh, as Dr. Davis said, at this point, in looking at the relationship between uh, cell phone use and brain cancer, we have conflicting studies. Some studies, uh, which are not absolutely perfect, show no correlation, and we also have some studies that tend to suggest a correlation. Uh, one of the recent studies from Sweden show that if you use cell phones for a period of 10 years, an hour a day, that your risk may be increased as much as twofold. The real concern here, Larry, is, is, is it's analogous to this. We've only been using cell phones for a short period. Most of the studies are for a short period of time. So if, if you have a 14-year-old who smokes cigarettes, we don't expect that 14-year-old to develop lung cancer at 24. We expect them to develop lung cancer at 54. If you have an 8-year-old using a cell phone, we don't expect them to develop lung cancer at 18. But at 48, so what happens after 20, 30, 40 years of use? That's the concern, and we don't have the answer yet to that. If we have, uh, we have millions of cell phones in use now, right? That's correct. And has, the and, and, has there been an increase in brain cancer? Well, again, I, we, we know that if you look at studies, there have been various explanations to try to account for the increase in brain cancer. But has there been an increase? It's, it's been an increased reported incidence, and that may be related to better MRI scans or more frequent use of, of CT scans, but we don't expect to, at this early stage, I mean, we've only been using cell phones with a high frequency for less than 10 years, for about 10, 20 years. So again, you know, the concern, and based on the biology that we know with the development of cancer, the real concern is what happens after 20, 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. and, and that is, what we need to be concerned about. And that's why I think the University of Pittsburgh advised us to be cautious. The evidence, Dr. Song, having done so many interviews over the years against tobacco was uh, statistical. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, they didn't know why tobacco caused lung cancer, only that it caused lung cancer. You use tobacco, you got an increased chance. Is that going to be the evidence here, statistical? It, it could be, but it may be another 10 or 20 years before we have the necessary statistics to make those recommendations. What we do know from radiation studies, uh, whether or not it was people exposed in Hiroshima to kids treated for cancer with radiation, is that sometimes it took 15 to 20 years before people developed cancer that uh, secondary that we could attribute to the radiation. When we, when we talk about cell phones, we're looking at radio frequency, which is on the big spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. You've got uh, radio uh, waves on one side, which is responsible for TV, radio, and cell phones. And then you've got gamma uh, waves on the other side. What we know about the gamma waves or the more intense radiation is that's a ionizing radiation that causes DNA damage that mutates cells that develop into cancer. For the uh, radio waves, there has been no clear evidence to suggest that it's a DNA damage. So if there is some damage, it has to be some other mechanism that has really yet to be reported. So what would you say to people who use cell phones? 
I think the most important thing is that when we look at any type of radiation exposure, whether or not it's radio waves or, um, or gamma uh, waves, is that you the duration of your exposure. So clearly, um, if you're on the cell phone for a long period of time, I think we all have been uh, in situations where our ear gets warm. That uh, clearly means that maybe we're on a little bit too long. So do what? Uh, I, I think that an earpiece may help to greatly reduce uh, the exposure for radio frequency radiation, but people need to uh, keep in mind that if the phone is on the hip pocket, their whole body is still being exposed to the same amount of radiation that it would be if it was up to their ear. It's just so the brain. A, what choice of cancer do I want, hip well, uh, or brain? Well, surprisingly, the concern about radio uh, frequency exposure is not so much for the brain or the uh, hip, but really either the testes or the eyes. Those are the areas that are most sensitive to radio frequency mm -hmm. because they get hot so and they don't have the blood vessels to cool off. Would you say, Dr. Davis, therefore, always use an earpiece? Don't put a cell phone up to your ear. If at all possible, use an earpiece because it does reduce substantially the signal because the further away you can have the phone from your body, the better off it is for you. What about eight and nine, ten-year-olds all over elementary school running around with them now? Well, right now, unfortunately, of the 28 million children in this country who between the ages of uh, eight and 12, about half of them are using a cell phone. Sometimes it's their mom and dad, but using it frequently. And we're all very concerned about that because we know that the cell signal gets deeply into the brain of a child. You concerned, it's Dr. Black, about the child? Yes, I am. We, we know that young brains may be more susceptible. Uh, and they have a longer exposure, and some of the studies have also suggested that the longer exposure, the higher the risk. I think the, the, the key thing here, Larry, is that we would assume as a society that cell phones are safe, that the government wouldn't allow us to use this device unless it was safe. The reality is it's a source of microwave radiation. There have been studies to, to suggest that there may be an associated risk of uh, brain cancer and also a benign tumor of the ear, and there have been some studies to suggest eye tumors as well. The important thing, I think, for your listeners to, to hear is that they need to be cautious because we may not have the answer to this for another 10 years. Another distinguished doctor will be joining us and will take some calls too, and some of them may come from cell phones. Stay there. And in New York, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Dr. Gupta wanted to add something about cell phones and children, doctor. Well, you know, one thing that Dr. Brawley brought up is this idea that it's electromagnetic radiation uh, that uh, can be of concern. And Larry, I know you like pictures. Sometimes they can be worth a thousand words. Take a look here. This was actually from a study <clears throat> looking at the amount of penetration of this electromagnetic radiation in a five-year-old over here. You certainly see that it's more. This is the brain and this is the amount of radiation penetrating into the brain compared to a 10-year-old and compared to an adult. Now, again, this type of radiation is not ionizing radiation, which everybody agrees, I think, is bad for you. But the question is, what is this really doing uh, to a young child's brain? A lot of these studies being done on adults, and now you have children using these phones, and they're going to use them their entire lives. They're going to have 60, 70 years of usage. What is the effect of that amount of penetration of radiation on the brain? 